Okay, gang, welcome back. Today we're talking about thermodynamics again. We're going to talk about properties and units. So this is kind of a chemistry review. So you should know all this stuff, but I'm going to tell you again anyway, just to make sure you remember, okay? So remember properties, let me stand over here, properties are anything that we can observe or measure about a system or matter, okay? So anything we can observe or, or um, measure. So for example, I've got I've drawn two beakers here on my board, okay? And I put some slime in it, okay? So it's just some kind of matter. We don't know what it is. It's slime, okay? It's you know, it, it, we can make it that way we can just make up the numbers about it. It can be super dense or super loud or whatever. But anyway, so we've got one that has a quite a big volume in it and one that's got a quite a small volume in it. So let's just talk about those. What might be we able to I don't know, what kind of properties might we be able to observe or measure about that matter in those systems? And the system is the beaker itself, right? But this, what can we observe about the matter in those beakers? Well, we can observe maybe um, its temperature. We can observe its mass or measure it. We can, we can measure its volume, right? Maybe our, our beakers are delineated here by some kind of uh, volume measurement. Um, we might be able to find out it's um, the pressure on it, right? Um, we might be able to find out uh, corrosiveness, um, freezing point, boiling point. That's not how you spell boiling. Boiling point. Um, etc. Right? We may be able to find out all kinds of different things about that material. Okay. So when we're talking about these these properties of these materials, there's two kinds of properties that we need to remember. Okay. And there are um, extensive properties. Okay. And there are intensive properties. Okay. So what do we know about those two terms there? I don't remember that. So let me see. Huh. Let me give another pen. Intensive properties are independent. of matter present. Okay? So it's independent of the amount of matter present. Guess what extensive is? Kind of the opposite of that. It is dependent on amount of matter present. Okay? So how do I remember that? It's super easy. Look, intensive and dependent. <laughs> okay, so that ought to be easy for us to remember. So let's just think about these two beakers here, right? If I'm talking about some of these properties, and this list could be longer. There could be way more of these properties that I'm thinking about. We could have length down here, right? Let's say I have some length of a lead bar, okay? Is it this long or is it that long or is it that long, right? I don't know. Okay, so let's talk about the temperature of these two beakers, okay? They both have the same material in them. Do you think that the temperature here is the same as the temperature there? Let's say they're exposed and they're in the same laboratory sitting on the bench. They've been sitting there all night. Guess what? Does the temperature vary just because there's more of it? No. So independent of the amount present is going to be like temperature. It doesn't, doesn't matter how much is there. It's the same. What else? Is, how about mass? Does it matter? Now, does it matter about mass? Ooh, there's way more of it. So guess what? There's going to be more mass. So that is dependent upon the size, right? So mass is going to be an extensive property. The volume. Well, the more of it I have, the bigger the volume of it I have, right? So that is going to be an extensive property. And I'm going to put a little V like that. 
which means that's just regular volume. And I'm going to tell you that that I'm going to I'm going to use that volume because I'm going to differentiate it from specific volume, which we'll talk about here in just a second. And then how about pressure? Well, assuming this is like you know exposed to the atmosphere, so this has 14.7 on it. That has 14.7 on it. It could be the same pressure. So that would be an intensive property, right? Um, corrosiveness. That's just as corrosive as that is, right? So that's 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 independent of the size, okay? Um, freezing point. That freezes the same point that does. That's an intensive property. We'll put FP for freezing point, right? Boiling point, same thing. Length. How about length? Okay. Again, think of this as a bar. I've got a bar of slime. Does it matter on uh, how much there is or how long it is? Yeah, the longer it is, the bigger the, the bigger the length is. So length is going to be dependent on the amount I have because the more I have, the longer it is, right? So that's a that's an extensive property. So just do it in your head that way. Does it if if I change the amount of it I have, like if I have air, if I have air in a box this big, and then I have air in a box twice that big, the mass is different, the volume is different. But it's still the same temperature air, no matter that it's bigger. Uh, the pressure's the same. Uh, so you can kind of talk your way through what is an extensive and what is an intensive property. Okay, easy enough? Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about uh, this one right quick. This is specific volume, okay? So specific volume. Okay. So if I have this volume here, maybe it's, it's got some, there is some volume, but if I want to get it down to like a per unit volume, like how much does like one milliliter weigh or how much does one is, how, many, how much volume does one kilogram occupy? So I can get it down to just a per unit basis, right? By calculating the specific volume, okay? So let's say that, the, that our slime here uh, the volume, let's say it has, there's three liters in here, let's just say, okay? So there's three liters, and the mass of those three liters of slime is four kilograms. So little v is specific volume. So this guy here, specific volume. Okay, so how do I find the specific volume? Well, that's easy. I take the regular volume, and I divide it by its mass. So specific volume, in this case, is going to equal three liters divided by four kilograms. So the specific volume is gonna be 0.75 liters per kilogram, right? So what do I need that for? Well, if I know the specific volume, then I can calculate, um, or this is, in, this is liters per kilogram, then I can expand that to say, Okay, I wonder how much, how many, how much, how many kilograms um, twenty liters would be. It's easy because I can just multiply it by this little conversion factor here, and it'll tell me that. So the specific volume or, will allow you to extrapolate that to any size volume. Okay, I hope that's clear. So this is something that you'll see a lot is specific volume, and we denote that with a little v, and then regular volume is with so. V with a line through it is like the whole volume. Specific volume is like per unit volume. Is that clear? Okay. And the last thing I want to talk to you about are units, okay? Units are so important. I know you hear that in every class. Oh, units, units, units. Dude, there's so many equations in thermodynamics. If you can just make the units work out, you'll almost always get the problem right. So I'm going to be upset if I, if I hear you get a test back and you, you got minus two because you didn't put your units on there. That's going to make me upset. Don't do that, okay? So, for units in thermodynamics, okay, please, you guys, use units in, let's just say, uh, get rid of that, in your work, okay? I know we're all lazy. We like to write equations. Just put the numbers in the equation and then hit equals and put it in our calculators. But I want you to put all of the units in your work, and I want you crossing them out and making sure that they all are the same units, and we have unit consistency, okay? This is huge, okay? Unit consistency, okay? 
let's see what kind of things that we can remember, okay? So we have two kinds of units. I know you people watching around the world, you're upset because the, the, the uh, we Americans use U.S. customary units, and y'all hate those. It's really dumb. We do, too. But uh, we're a proud people, and we're not switching. So uh, it's, it's, it's kind of silly. <coughs> we should all be using the metric unit, but they're units because they're just so easy because they're all base 10. But we have these imperial units that are very confusing. So, so here we go. Um, you have the metric, or what y'all call the SI units, and then we have USCS, the US customary unit. Okay, so let's talk about a few things. Here we go for mass. Okay, for mass, of course, in the metric unit, we'll have the kilogram. And then in USCS, we'll have LB, and we have pounds for mass and pounds for force, so it's kind of confusing, right? But we just put a little M on there for pounds mass, okay? Um, uh, volume, let's see, not volume. How about what? Um, temperature, okay? Temperature. Now, temperature, you might think Celsius and Fahrenheit, but... We don't use that in thermodynamics. We use what we call an absolute temperature. And so we use, in the metric system, we use Kelvin. And we'll talk more about this later. And that's just denoted with a capital K. And then over here in the USCS, we'll use the ranking system. Okay. And that's what we use. And, and you don't, on these, you on, when you do Kelvin, you, you put degrees Kelvin, you put a K after it, or you put an R after it. But you don't put the little degree symbol there, okay? Um, how about pressure? Pressure in metric units, you would use something like uh, newtons over meter squared. Guess what that is? We call that a Pascal. And right, if you if you have an extra m, right, for newtons over millimeter squared. Then you have, there's your extra M, you have megapascals. So that's the way I remember that. There's the megapascals, the one that does the extra M on it, right? And then in the English system, we use um, PSI or, or KSI, right? Which is, which is pounds per uh, inch squared or kips per inch squared. Well, what is a kip? A kip is just a thousand pound. It's like a kilopound. So that's that's very common in the U.S. customer units is, is PSI, KSI. Um, what else do we have? Pressure, temperature, time. Time is easy. It's seconds both places. So that's easy enough. Um, and then finally we have, what do we have left? Mass, temperature. Oh, how about force? Okay, so in the metric unit, you have newtons. And what is a newton? Do you remember? A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And in the English system, our force is, again, it's pounds, right? What is my force I'm exerting on the floor? Well, I weigh 200 pounds. That's what I'm exerting on the floor. But that's pounds force, okay? And then the only other one that you need to kind of remember are, is acceleration. And acceleration due to gravity, right? In the metric system, 9.81 meters per second squared. In the English system, 32.2 feet per second squared, okay? So those are some kind of, you need to remember these units. That's something that we should be familiar with at this point, right? I hope, okay? Now, one more thing, and then I'll, I'll leave you alone, and that is, let's work this little, little problem right here. It says, what is 38,000 BTU per hour in kilowatt units, okay? So we're going to have to remember another conversion factor to do this. So I'm going to show you how I do this, and I hope you do it the same way because I call this getting Mickey Mouse with your units. So I want you to be getting Mickey Mouse with your units and cancel them out, okay? What is BTU? Do you remember? BTU is a British a thermal unit. Okay? And we remember that one British thermal unit is equal to 1.055 kilowatt seconds. Okay, 
So here we go. Let's see if we can convert this. So we start off with this. 38,000, okay, BTU per hour, okay? Now, number one, I want this in kilowatts, right? So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I want to get rid of that BTU. So I'm going to put a BTU down here on the bottom, right? That way it'll cancel out this guy up here on the top. They'll divide out. And what is one BTU? One BTU is 1.055 kilowatt seconds, okay? Now I've gotten rid of my BTUs, right? Those are going to cancel. Whoop, whoop. And it's going to leave me with kilowatt seconds and hours. Uh -oh, we've got a one more mixed unit here, right? We've got seconds and we got hours. So I need to get rid of hours. And so here we go, multiply. Here's an hour. I'm going to put him on the top. So he'll cancel that with that guy, right? And then one hour is how many seconds? 60 minutes and then 60 seconds. That's 3,600, isn't it? Okay. And now I'm going to have what? Um, my seconds are going to cancel out. And it's going to leave me with just kilowatts, isn't it? So I have written every unit and crossed out every unit, and I am sure that if I take 38,000 and multiply by 1.055 and then divide that whole thing by 3,600, that I'm going to get the answer. Where's my calculator? Okay, so here we go. On 38, 1, 2, 3, uh, times 1.055 uh, divided by 3,600 equals... 11.14, okay, 11.14 kilowatts, and that would be the answer. And that's just converting, right? So we just converted that thing into a different unit, right? We converted BTU per hour into uh, kilowatts, into a different unit, okay? So if you will just cross all your units out and do all the things that we remember, what can you remember? Let's see what you can remember. Here's what I can remember. Uh, of course... 60 seconds equals one minute, right? Uh, and then 60 minutes equals one hour. Um, I can remember what? There are 5,280 feet in one mile, right? Um, and the metric ones are easy, right? But the uh, if you're doing this U.S. customary things, you need to remember this, right? Um, 7.49 gallons in one cubic foot. I can remember that. Um, what about any of these things? How about like horsepower? Do you remember what one horsepower is? It's 550 foot pounds per second, right? And on and on and on. And, and hopefully you'll get some kind of a conversion table if you need to in, in your on your test. You'll get some kind of the conversion table. But And then of course, then there's here's one BTU is equal to 1.055 kilowatt seconds, right? So there are some of these that you'll get more familiar with as we go along here in thermodynamics, but you got to remember these conversion factors. You got to go, go down here with your units and make sure everything crosses out and you'll almost always get the problem right. All right, come back next time. We'll talk about some more.